So all these devices we build are independent of our laptop or our desktop. So we use our USB cable just simply to program the device and to power it if we're debugging. But from then on, we can use a power supply like a battery. And we just have the blinking lights there. So if I wanted to look really cool at a party and wanted to wear a decorative small Arduino based device, I just need to connect it to power, not to my laptop. That would look particularly geeky. Maybe that's the look I'm going for. I just want to look a little geeky. And then I can kind of wear it. So why did we spend about four minutes watching this odd assortment of videos of this decorative LED light, of some musical keyboards, of a guitar modeling amp, of me taking my dogs out while wearing this weird LED display powered by a battery? Well, it's to impress upon you that these are independent devices, that they don't need to be connected to a laptop, right? They, Musical keyboards don't need to be connected to some fancy computer. They are computers. They're all microprocessors inside those. In the microwave, in the intelligent toaster, in the coffee maker. So all these don't require any other device. And sometimes we forget about that because we're tethered often, almost all the time, the Arduino is tethered to our laptop with this cable. And remember, the only thing this cable is for is to program the device and then to supply power to the device. But we can, once it's programmed, we can, it's mobile. We can take it anywhere. However, now here's the interesting thing. So if we are developing these musical keyboards and we have some sort of bug in them, we intend to, when we play the keys to have some musical sound, but nothing's coming out, well, we want to debug and have some environment where it's easy to debug that musical keyboard. And often we would connect that keyboard up to some big monitors, up to some computer to help us so we can see what's going on. And likewise, when we're programming these devices, it's helpful to be able to hook it up to our laptop so we can see what's going on. And is the button working? Is the LED correct? So it's a way of debugging. So in addition to pushing code through the wire, we can go the other way and send information back to the laptop to help us debug. So again, keep in mind that these devices are independent of a laptop. That's what makes them cool and fun. We can have an Arduino based who knows what, but when we want to debug, it's useful to connect to the laptop and see that. And that's what I'm going to demo now of how we can debug Arduino devices we build using our laptop. Okay, and let's start our discussion of debugging by looking at this circuit. And I'll first show you the correct way it should be work. Is, this is the one we've done before, where if I press two buttons, it blinks quickly. If I press the green button, it blinks a little bit slower, and the red button a little bit slower, and then no buttons, and it's off. And suppose, well, let me do some adjustment. Okay, and suppose it works this way, that I press, nothing's happening. And I, for the life of me, can't figure out what's wrong. Is it my code? Is it some problem that I did in the circuit? So what's wrong? So let's explore that a little bit. We're gonna first back up quite a bit and talk about things in general, and then specifically focus on this circuit. 
Okay, and for the beginning part of this, it doesn't matter if we're connected to this circuit. Obviously, when we're in the actual debugging, it will. You can just use a plain board not connected to anything. Well, connected to the laptop, but not connected to the breadboard. All right, let's start. All right, so let's get started with this. So we're going to look at how we can make what's called a serial connection between the Arduino Uno and our laptop. Serial just simply means serial is spelled <laughs> S-E-R-I-A-L. Let me just put it here. So it's S-E-M. And that just means things that come one right after another. So there's, uh, there's things occurring serially, like a podcast or a show or something. So that's we're going to look at that type of connection. This is how our Arduino Uno can send us information to the laptop. Most of the time we're going to be using it for debugging purposes. But for now, let's just see how it works. To start that connection, we have this command serial begin. And we have to give it the rate, what's called a baud rate. How fast are we sending information back and forth? And just, we're going to go pretty much at the slowest rate, 9600. Nine, basically 9600 characters a second. Okay, and once we have that connection, we can print information back to the laptop. So this is a program that we're sending to the Arduino right and when the arduino runs it can send information back to the laptop and the laptop will display it so let's just to begin with look at something simple so we can do serial print line that print ln stands for line and i can print just a string of characters hello world now if you're in pretty much any other programming course this will be the first thing you do in that programming course. You learn how to print hello world to the screen. Here we've been blinking lights, doing exciting things with buttons, and we're just doing this kind of as an aside to get used to debugging. So you can see already this Arduino course is 5,000 times more exciting than a traditional one where we're just printing information to the screen. That's my promo for the Arduino. Uh, let's just stop there. So nothing's going to loop through. It's just going to do something once. It's going to print hello world. So let me make sure I'm connected. I am. Let me just check here that I'm connected to a port. And I'll choose the Uno. And we need to name it something. Let me back up a bit here. Oops. Sorry. I'll call it hello world. All right. And now to look at it, we go here to this magnifying glass on the upper right. And when we mouse over, it'll say serial monitor. I'll click there. And it prints hello world. It does it kind of funky because I've interrupted it. But let me just press that reset button on the Arduino Uno so it sends it again. Okay, and I'm going to press the reset button on the Uno again. So, okay, now we've learned how the Arduino Uno can send some information back to the laptop. Not too practical, really, on the scheme of things, because if we wanted to write programs that display things on a laptop screen, we'd probably do everything on the laptop. But we're trying to learn how to do debugging, so we're bearing with this. All right, so let me go back to Hello World here. Let's say I also have some... integer value, let's call it 143, that's our hidden message. I can print that by going serial print line, oh, sorry, and then just msg, so the name of a variable, right, so that, sorry. So the name of a variable is msg, I can just print it out there. So let's see what happens in this case. And you can see it prints hello world 143. Again, let me hit the reset button. And hello world 143. Great. 
If we wanted to, we can do these printing here in the loop. I don't know why we'd want to. So every one second it'll print high. So first it initializes the connection at 9600 baud, it's called. Then we print hello world, then we print that message, message equals 143. Notice how we distinguish a variable from a string is that a string is bounded by these double quotes. Message has none, right? So it knows to look up what MSG equals, MSG equals 143. And then in the loop, we print high, and we wait a second, do the loop again, print high. So every second we'll be printing high. So let me upload that and quickly go to our serial monitor. And you can see it's printing high all the time. And let me explain one more thing before we move on to debugging. So in addition to print line, there is also a statement called print. And let me show you the difference. So I'll say print. I'm going to put a little space at the end of this line. And then it'll print this message. So that's the difference I make. Let me get rid of these just by commenting them out. So So what print does is it prints hello world and it doesn't go to the next line. So that print ln, that ln part means then go to the next line. So it prints hello world and then 143 and that 143 is here, serial so print line message. And once the ln occurs, it goes to the next line. And let me just do one more thing just for grins. Let's say we want a little counter. So let's say we'll call this starting, if I can spell. And I don't want this anymore. And let's say my counter starts at zero. And we'll print the counter. And we'll increment, oops, I got to get rid of the commenting. So I'll add one to the counter, and then I'm going to wait a second, right? So it's going to print the counter. The value of counter is zero, so it prints zero. It increments counter by one. So now counter is one. It waits a second. Then it does the loop again. It's going to print counter. It'll print one. That's the version, the current value of counter. Wait a second, and on and on. So let's upload this. And we could wait. I guess this is a good thing if you ever wanted to. Um, see how long you're <laughs> studying or something. You could do something like this. Otherwise, it's a pretty useless uh, thing to do just in this case. All right, so let's see how we can actually use it for debugging. That's actually the more interesting aspect. All right, so let's see how we can use our new found skills in serial printing to see how it can help us debug programs. And here's this program we have. I introduced it last time when I was showing buttons. And the task was that if I press two buttons, well, let me explain the circuit first. So there are two buttons and an LED. If I press two buttons, the LED should blink fast. And if I press the green button, mine are colored, it should blink a little slower. If I press the red button, it'll be slower still. And zero buttons pressed, nothing should happen. So let me upload this to my board. And it's done uploading, and let me take a look. Okay, that's a bummer, and it's not, not blinking. So now the task is in debugging, so obviously there's something wrong, and we have to figure out, well, where is it wrong? You know, what line to fix? And one task is, can we narrow it down a bit? Did I wire the LED correctly? 
Did I wire the buttons correctly? Is there a problem with my code? So where is the problem? So let's add some serial print lines to see if we can narrow down where the problem is. So in setup, right, I'm gonna begin, set up that serial interface at 9600. And let's see, so here it's supposed to be blinking, this digital right, so I'm gonna just put a, the, my first print there. And I'm just going to put that message should be blinking. So, oh. all right. So I set up the connection, serial begin, and I have this print statement to see if it gets here. So if it, if it says it should be blinking and it's not blinking, then there must be something hardware problem with my LED. So let's see if it passes that test. It's done uploading. And let's go to the serial monitor. And now let me press the two buttons. Oh, and that doesn't print. Okay, it doesn't let the LED off the hook, but there must be another problem in addition to the LED. So let's take a look here. So that should be blinking and, well, let's check the buttons. So if the green buttons, green button state is low and the red button, button state is low, that means we pressed both buttons. So let's check at least that it sees that we pressed both buttons. I could type in whatever I want here. I'm typing that in. All right, let's give that a shot. Okay, and go here. Okay, let me press both buttons. Whoa. All right, well, both buttons press. So it can see that I pressed both buttons. Now I'm pressing one at a time, and it's not changing, but as soon as I press both buttons, it recognizes it. So that part works, right? So it can tell that both buttons are working. That shows that, well, the buttons must be wired correctly. Otherwise, it would you know, not show that. So let's see what else is the problem. Well, you know, we're altering this variable called weight. So let me print that out. Right, so I didn't put a quote in this time because it's a name of a variable. And if both buttons are pressed, then weight should equal 100. Let's actually see if it does equal 100. <clears throat> okay, it's 1,000 now. That's what we originally said. Now I'm going to press both buttons. It should be 100. Oh, and it is. Both buttons pressed and weight is 100. We're zooming through the loop a lot. <laughs> and that shows you how fast that loop is. All right, so that 100 is correct. So weight gets set correctly. So let, the problem seems to be in here in this if statement. So weight's 100, and if weight's larger than 1,000, then we should blink. Well, ah, it's never larger than 1,000, right? It's going to be smaller than 1,000. So if weight's 100 here. We printed it out. If weight is smaller than, then blink it. Well, let's see if that works. Okay. Oh my gosh, and it works. It's blinking correctly. Yep, Every the green button by itself blinks correctly, and the red button's slower. Okay, everything is working. So let's see what we've accomplished. So we learned through these print lines that there was nothing wrong with the wiring of our circuitry, right? We kind of ruled that out. We learned that, you know, through these prints that the problem was not with this if else, that all seemed to work fine. It was down here. So we were able to isolate it to just a few lines of code. So that's really useful. Let's say, I think I said this already, but if this printed should be blinking and the LED doesn't blink, that would mean that there's a problem with the hardware of the LED, that we miswired the LED, the resistor, if things aren't just connected. So we'd look at that LED. So this is really helpful. Let me just make a change to my board here. All right, I think I did it. All right, uh, let me go to the serial monitor. And now I'm gonna press both buttons. 
and uh, it doesn't say it says 200 but it doesn't say both buttons pressed or whatever we had let's take a look at our code here so I am pressing both buttons and I'm not getting this serial print line both buttons pressed and what I am getting here is is the text that the green button must be pressed because I get that 200 displayed right let me show you the 200 press both buttons and it, it is blinking but it's just not as fast all right so hmm the problem doesn't see, it seems to be here that it, this doesn't work we're not getting both buttons pressed so one thing we might want to do is well let's check to see if we have a problem with our code or is it a hardware problem so i'm going to do a serial print oops sorry remember that doesn't go to the new line and i'll just say red button state Uh, let's do print line and that's called red right and the difference is this is a string it's bounded by quotes and so it'll just print out red button state this without quotes is a variable so we have to go look what the value of the variable is and the value of red button state is it reads the red button okay let's see if that works okay red button state is one All right it can either be on or off high or low or one is high low is zero so let's look at that and red button state is still one so it doesn't even though i'm pressing both buttons down it doesn't detect that the red button is pressed down just for confirmation of this let's do the same thing with the green button Just call it. Oh. So it'll tell us if we press the green button and if we press the red button. Hopefully. Okay, see, it scrolls fast because it's going through that loop rapidly. But you can see that the red button is one and the green button state is one, meaning neither button are pressed. Now let me press both buttons. Okay, the green button is indicating that it's pressed because it's zero, meaning low. But the red button doesn't change even though I'm pressing it. So it still says one. Uh, no, I'm not pressing it. So that red button, something's wrong with it. So let's see, either I wired it incorrectly. Well, I wired it somehow incorrectly. So we know the problem is not in the code. The problem could be that way up here, the in the, the wire is not connected to pen four in my Arduino, or I just simply miswired it. And that was the case. I, I had the ground one off a little bit, so it wasn't really connected to the button. So let me fix that. So I check that kind of indicates some hardware problem. Uh, it looks better. So now let me go ahead. I'm not changing anything in the code. I just changed the hardware. Now let me press both buttons. And they're both zero blinking. And it says both buttons pressed. It's kind of hard to see when everything's scrolling fast. And the light is blinking super fast. So let's kind of review how this works. So with these serial print lines, we're able to really kind of narrow down, narrow down where the problem is. You know, if we, once we get more complex circuitry, we're gonna have lots of parts. We could have an, an error in any of them and the code could get long. Maybe it's gonna be a thousand lines. So print lines are a way of figuring out, well, what little bit can we narrow down where the problem is? And we saw we could do that, right? We could rule out some hardware, it's not the hardware and we can kind of find, well, it must be within these five lines of code or so. So this is an extremely helpful thing to do, to use these serial print lines. This is gonna be really important when we move to the next experiment and talk about potentiometers. Now, potentiometers, instead of buttons, can be either pressed or non-pressed. Potentiometers can take a wide range of values, and sometimes things aren't working because we think the potentiometer will go from zero to 255, but really it's going from 10 to 200 or something along those lines. So it's a very useful thing as we progress throughout the course to have these, to 
as a tool these serial print lines. So I'm hoping that was helpful. Take care. We'll see you in that next video about potentiometers. Take care. Bye.